Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today we're discussing stem cell therapy for stroke. So a couple statistics. Stroke is a major cause of death and disability worldwide with a lifetime risk of one in six, so between 15 and 20 percent, and it actually doubles for each decade after the age of 55. There's different types of stroke. 87 percent of strokes are ischemic. And that's when a blood vessel supplying blood to the brain is obstructed, often due to a plaque formation. Um, high blood pressure is a huge risk factor for not only ischemic stroke, but also hemorrhagic stroke, which is when a weakened blood vessel ruptures, either due to an aneurysm or an AV malformation. Uh, when you talk about TIAs, that's a transient ischemic attack. It's a mini stroke that may last for a few minutes or a few hours. Usually it's reverse uh, with the symptoms, and it should be a huge warning to uh, individuals who sustain that with a significant workup and then treatment to help prevent a real stroke from happening. Cryptogenic is when it's undetermined, and then a brainstem stroke is the most unfortunate because it involves the brainstem, both sides of the body, and a lot of patients end up unable to speak or move in what's called a locked-in uh, state. So stroke diagnosis um, usually involves a CAT scan or an MRI, and sometimes with a blood flow component, so it's a CT angiogram or an MR angiogram to see where the stroke is and how bad it is. Traditional treatment for an ischemic stroke. Um, ischemic strokes can be either cerebral thrombosis, where it's an artery going to the brain has the clot, um, or cerebral embolism, where it's a wandering clot. Breaks off usually due to something like AFib and goes up into that vasculature. So treatment could be, if you can get to it quickly enough with a clot-busting drug, that can help a lot. Thrombectomy, which is where a catheter goes up into the uh, area and the clot is removed. And then longer-term anticoagulants, carotid uh, end arterectomy, where you take out the plaque surgically, and then pro possibly placement of a stent to ensure continuous blood flow. All right, so for a hemorrhagic stroke, remember that's when a blood vessel ruptures. So it could be intracerebral in the tissue of the brain or subarachnoid, which is just below the surface. Um, various risk factors for these types of strokes, once again, high blood pressure, cigarette smoking, huge risk factor, oral contraceptives, um, alcohol intake, and possibly um, the use of illegal drugs. Um, so one of the treatments could be a metal clip where you tie off the, the hemorrhage or um, removal of the abnormal vessels like the AV malformation. So for a TIA, um, you know, our brain cells need continuous oxygen and that comes from blood flow. So if you block that, nerve cells can start to die with just within minutes. So a patient could get weakness, uh, vision abnormalities, language abnormalities. Um, usually that resolves, but in a real stroke, those, you know, they don't go away um, right away. So this is a warning. 12% uh, of strokes are preceded by a TIA. All right, so stroke recovery. You could possibly have, you know, like we mentioned, weakness, vision abnormalities, language um, issues, drooping of the face on one side. So the first three months, um, intensive rehab should be accomplished, um, and there's some intrinsic, um, you know, inherent uh, recovery uh, that can occur. It could either return various things to pre-stroke, which would be fantastic, or patients can learn other ways to do things, which is called compensation strategy. Uh, now, brain stimulation um, has shown to have some effect as well. I thought I'd mention that. Now, after six months, you can still get some recovery intrinsically, but it's often slow. Um, and there really hasn't been a significant option to date, you know, for these patients. So what you can end up with long-term are cognitive symptoms with memory, difficulty speaking, like having an aphasia, physical symptoms, weakness, paralysis, trouble swallowing, or depression, um, and then maybe fatigue and trouble sleeping. All right, so let's try and get to some good news here uh, for strokes. Stem cell therapy, there's several mechanisms on how it works. And if you look at the, these papers over the years, you start to see continuously uh, researchers mentioning neuroprotection. So if you can give stem cells soon enough after a stroke, it can protect from additional neuron damage. Um, neuro, neuron regeneration, 
is very helpful, obviously, for recovery. Uh, there's a huge inflammation response after a stroke, so stem cells can help reduce that. Immune modulation can help reduce some of the damaging cytokines and interleukins and things like that that your body produces, which can actually, you know, you want it to help, but it can actually be damaging, so it can help with that immune modulation. Anti-apoptosis is reduction of stopping cell death. Um, and then I should mention angiogenesis, which is new blood vessel formation, which can help with repair. Um, now I'm going to present a few uh, review studies here in a row. Here's one out of the Journal of Stroke, um, where they reviewed 13 studies. Now what they noted that is you need to give a sufficient cell dose to get beneficial effects. We've known this for years. A lot of times when people say, you know, oh, we did a study on this or that, and we just didn't get the results. Well, a lot of times it's because they're just not giving enough. So you got to make sure that the amount of cells that you give, you know, we see people around the world giving 5 to 10 million cells to a patient total, and that is just a disservice. You, you really need to do the calculation properly. Um, you know, a minimum that we would give is a million stem cells per kilogram. You know, we give upwards of a lot more. Um, and in this study, they noted that umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells expressed preferentially secreted factors that help with those functions I mentioned. Neuroprotection, neurogenesis, angiogenesis. Now, they did talk about intranasal delivery. Um, we uh, do that sometimes at our clinics. Um, it's quick. It's safe. Um, it's very easy in a sense that, um, you know, it just takes a, a few seconds. The cribriform plate deep uh, in the nasal cavity is pretty porous, permeable, so you can get a nice concentration of the stem cell material into the central nervous system to improve recovery. Um, this paper, <clears throat> once again, was a review paper. They looked at several studies. They noted that intracerebral and intrathecal um, application appears to have a broader window, meaning that it doesn't need to be done the first few weeks after a stroke. You can do it, you know, a decade out and still get some significant functional recovery. Um, now, we don't do intracerebral. What that would mean would be doing drill holes through the skull to inject the stem cells uh, around the brain. Um, that's obviously pretty invasive. So intrathecal is what we commonly do, um, where it's basically it's a spinal tap, and then you give the stem cells that can then go right into the spinal cord and the brain. Um, it's been very, very effective, very safe. Um, so that or the intranasal, okay? Now, they looked at various studies. One looked at bone marrow stem cells into the brain um, with up to 55 million stem cells, achieved excellent neurologic outcomes, even with patients up to a decade out from stroke. Another one, they looked at intrathecal with 24 patients up to 11 years out, and the vast majority of them had improved ambulation, better hand control, better balance. Um, it was fantastic. So uh, here's a review paper out of China. Uh, now, they did note that if you transplant cells at two to three weeks after the stroke, it's probably better. Now, you know, that just goes to, to show that you still have the intrinsic recovery going on, which you can then amplify with the stem cells. But, you know, a lot of patients are still in inpatient uh, rehab. You know, we, we usually get them when they, they come talk to us after several months. Um, and, you know, this paper went into the uh, neuroprotection, new blood flow, angiogenesis, neurogenesis, all those types of mechanisms that uh, researchers see all the time. Um, now, this one looked at 50 to 60 million bone marrow-derived mesenchymal stem cells with just an IV with patients who had stroke up to two years out. Um, and they got some good results uh, just with the IV infusion. Uh, this is a Duke University paper. Uh, a few years ago, where they treated patients after an ischemic stroke of three to 10 days afterwards with umbilical cord blood, um, up to 30 million total nucleated cells per kilogram. Um, now, that's total nucleated cells. Uh, only, you know, a percentage of those, maybe 10% are actually stem cells. Um, and they noted that uh, they saw improvements in functional outcome in all participants by three months with just the IV infusion, they really didn't have any significant adverse events related to the, the umbilical cord blood. With umbilical cord blood, you don't have to do cross-matching or cross-typing. Um, patients tolerate those um, stem cell infusions well. Um, without 
any tor type of cross matching or typing. They don't cause a rejection reaction. So this is a 2019 study um, where they infused 1.5 million stem cells per kilogram, very similar to what we do in 36 patients who were up to eight years out from stroke. Um, and they saw significant functional and behavioral benefits with no significant adverse events related to the cells. So you don't really need to study this table too much. Um, but what you can see is that on memory, functional, uh, depression score, things like that, they were all statistically significant. So you don't need to understand statistics to know that these are less than 0 0.05. And that means that the variables were significant um, upwards of a year out from the treatment. Um, here's a two-year safety and clinical outcome study out of Stanford um, with patients, 18 patients who were either six months up to five years out from their stroke. They took uh, bone marrow stem cells. They modified them with a transfection of a plasmid. I'm not quite sure why they did that because they even mentioned that once those cells start to proliferate, the stem cells, they lose that plasmid. So you know, it didn't make a lot of sense uh, to me, but the patients had dramatic outcomes. I mean, some started walking again. They couldn't walk before. Uh, some started to talk better, dramatically better, lift their arms. I mean, it was really, really clinically meaningful. In this study, they actually did the, the intracerebral. They made the drill holes in the skull. So in conclusion, uh, there's many small studies, early clinical trials, our own experience over the last 10 years, that stem cell therapy for stroke is not only safe, but it's typically very effective. Uh, you do need to give high stem cell numbers, um, and that's what we do. Um, you don't need to inject intracerebral with skull drill holes. We do intrathecal, which puts the stem cells right where they need to be in the central nervous system. Um, we use umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells, which give fantastic results, you know, just like uh, using the bone marrow of the patient, him or her, Self. So we typically do a combination of IV and intrathecal. Um, we do anywhere from one to three million stem cells per kilogram. Um, and we also use exosomes, which are extracellular vesicles, which have been shown to be very effective in combination with stem cells. Um, we don't use embryonic stem cells or induced pluripotent stem cells. They are not ready for prime time use. There are significant uh, risk factors there with rejection and tumor. We use only mesenchymal stem cells, hematopoietic stem cells, and extracellular vesicles from mesenchymal stem cells for our treatments. Now, for our treatment program internationally, we have several locations in Mexico, several in Pakistan, Honduras, and the Philippines is upcoming, um, and more on the way. Our process is very simple. It starts with a free phone consultation with one of our licensed, experienced stem cell doctors. We have patient concierge reps who assist with all the, your travel logistics. Um, all of our centers are within about 20 minutes, 30 minutes max from an airport. So we'll pick you up, take you to the clinic, the hotel, back and forth. Now, when you look at the cells that we use internationally, um, it's umbilical cord stem cell tissue, predominantly from the United States. Uh, except in Mexico, where we have a lab in Mexico City. Um, and the pristine safety record processed with quality assurance standards that actually exceed the FDA. The labs are CGMP compliant, ISO certified, ISO certified, clean rooms, really um, stellar quality assurance. The stem cells are very pure and potent. Um, so when you look at our treatment programs internationally, I want to mention a few things. One is we definitely give patients enough cells to where they can get clinical benefits. All right, you're not going to walk away thinking you didn't get enough. Um, now our treatments have been very safe in uh, close to 10 years and 16,000 procedures worldwide. We've never had a significant adverse event. So it's been very safe for patients and very convenient. Um, you know, we'll pick you up. Uh, at the airport, uh, take you to the clinic, hotel, and back, um, so you don't have to worry about those types of arrangements. Um, and it's it, the most cost-effective program in the world. If you look at what our centers uh, charge, we've used our buying power to lower our cost to patients 
to make it where it's much less than half of the cost of a U.S. treatment. And in uh, Pakistan, it's probably 80% less than what it would cost in the United States. Um, so when you look at the quality of the cells, the quality of the treatments with the doctors that we have, and the low cost, it becomes a home run uh, for patients. I refer to it as providing the Mercedes of stem cell therapy for the price of a Chevy. Our three's been featured on every major media channel for years. Uh, we continue to win awards. Last year we won uh, USA's leading regenerative therapy services provider, 50 smartest companies, 10 most innovative, just to name a few. The process to get started with us is very simple. If you visit us at r3stem.com, you can see where our locations are. Um, and you can also just give us a call on the U.S. prefix of plus one, 888 888-988-0515. And we'll get you set up with that free consultation. If you want to email us with questions, info at r3stemcell.com is the best way to do that. Thank you very much for watching.